Hello guys, welcome back to another MCreator tutorial. Today we're going to be updating the plant tutorial to cover all the new features that have been added since uh, 1.8.2 I think two that I did the last one. So there's a lot of new features and stuff like that and I'll be covering as much as I can in today's video. So the first thing to do is if you're on your brand new thing, you should probably be under one of these different workspaces. Uh, you want to go to the mod elements and then click on the pl green plus sign and then go to plant and then you want to give it a registry name. Now the registry name is basically the ID for what the plant will be and its um, name that it will be as well. So it links to the GUI name, but you can also change the GUI, the display name if you want to later on. But uh, this registry will be with this particular plant from this point on. So make sure you name it something that you can remember and that isn't used um, already. Um, also, you want to make sure that it's just one word. It doesn't have any weird characters or um, any spaces. Spaces won't work either. Um, use capital letters for basically setting a break in the word. So for example, you can call it green plant and then as you can see down here under the registry name it has an underscore for that particular one so you don't actually have to add underscores for your your registries to begin with so you can just use capital letters like this it'll work perfectly fine all right so once you've done that um, you can name it whatever you want and then you can basically just click create plant and then you're presented with the first of a few screens for basically setting your properties. Uh, this is the visual and type of the plant itself. So this is uh, where you're going to be setting your textures depending on where you what you're going to be using. You might have uh, two textures. Uh, for example, the double plant here requires two textures, the bottom and the top where the last one only requires one texture. I'll cover this part in just a second after I cover the top one. So the models are on the other side here. You can actually set um, custom models. So if you have models imported, uh, they need to be JSON files, but you can select them from this dropdown list. By default, there are two built-in uh, models that you can choose from. The cross model, which is similar to grass, like the tall grass, and then the other one is the uh, crop model, which is very similar to how wheat and stuff uh, grows. So you can choose either of these by default or import one from an application that you've exported from, such as Blockbench and stuff like that that you've made. Uh, the plant texture, this is optional. You can select this though, but uh, what this basically does is it basically sets the texture for the particular thing. You can use an item texture for this. Uh, the plant particle texture, this is basically going to the, be basically when you break the block, it's going to display the particles. Now, I think by default, uh, you it will basically inherit this unless you specify otherwise. So you can still use your textures, but if you want different particles, you can basically uh, set the particles. And it's just basically like a color map that you can basically use and then I'll kind of do a whole bunch of particles uh, for the breaking and stuff. Uh, tint, tint type is basically what kind of tint it is. Uh, now, if you're using grass or um, things like grass, ferns, stuff like that, then you can use the tint index. Uh, you can use it for plants as well. But um, basically what this does is it allows you to inherit certain different types of uh, colors for the biome. Uh, for example, grass basically indicates that... Um, the grass color for the biomes, foliage is for things like leaves, water is water, sky, fog, and water fog. So you have a whole bunch of different things as well as no tint. And then you want, um, is plant tinted? You want to make sure that that's enabled if you're using tint as well. All right, and then the special information about the plant. Uh, this is basically lore text, um, also known as the little text underneath the item. It basically displays things. You can use commas to separate it, uh, for different to add different lines and stuff like that, or you could just um, add it. Uh, color codes should work with this from what I remember. Uh, that you can go into your character map. If you are not familiar with that, you can just type a char and 
character map should come up right here and then it should be this option right here where you can basically get the character you just want to select it copy it and then you can paste it in here and then you would set the ID for the color that you want to do so for example nine is light blue and then you would put your text behind that so that's basically that and then there is the static uh, the basically the types of plants so this one right here is very similar to grass or flowers single flowers uh, you can set the generation type to flower grass this will affect the way that it generates grass is more global uh, it has a lot more spread over the biome where flowers are mostly in patches so you have those different two settings if you want to use um, the suspicious stew effect then you can basically set the effect here and the duration for the the basically the status effect you can also use your own custom effects as well if you want to uh, they will show up in the list after you've created the potion effect um, and you will need to add the tag here to your flower itself so it is minecraft colon small underscore flowers and basically this will allow you to use suspicious stews for the crafting recipe all right the other one is double plant this one basically allows you to create things like the double flowers and double tall grass double ferns and again you have the generation type for flowers or grass so you can choose either one of those and the last one is a growable plant type. This is very similar to sugarcane and um, I guess bamboo in a sense too. So you can basically set the, um, the maximum height for it. Uh, default is three, so you can basically set that. And that's all for this particular page. We'll move on to the bounding boxes. All right, so you have a couple different options for this. Uh, first thing, if you want to use custom bounding boxes, what a bounding box is, is basically the hitbox for the block. So if you want to enable that and set your own dimensions and stuff like that, you can do that. There is another option here that you can basically do, and this is basically disable apply uh, applying of the model offset bounding box. So basically what this would do is, um, your plant will still kind of be in different random locations uh, on the tile that it's basically generating on, but you can disable the general hitbox where it's going to be where the plant is. So you, if you wanted it to be in the center, then you could basically check that and then set uh, something like 0.25 or something like that for the X and Z and then lower the... Um, the Z and the maximum Z and ma minimum or maximum X uh, location to the same amount and then you can basically have it in the center instead. Um, I will be doing a tutorial on this pretty soon uh, probably next week and what I'll be covering is basically the more efficient way that I've discovered recently to basically set up the bounding boxes so we'll cover that in just a future video but uh, for now that's basically that. Um, all right, so the properties, uh, we'll cover that next. All right, so it's pretty self-explanatory for most of these settings, but there are a few that are a little bit more trickier to work with. Uh, the in-game name is basically the display name for the actual, uh, the flower of the block itself. So when you're holding the item, it will basically display this name here. Uh, the creative tab is basically where the item will be going under. Now, by default, most plants are under the decorations tab for Minecraft. If you have a custom creative tab, then it will show up at the top here. You can basically select that if you want to. Uh, hardness and resistance, these are set uh, to the regular values for a flower or plant in general. So it's zero and zero by default. Uh, jump factor, you can generally leave this alone. Um, the default is one, but um, basically what this allows you to do is controls the jump height of the entity. So basically um, the honey blocks are very similar to the jump factor of 0 0.5, where uh, if you want to make them jump more like higher, then you can basically set the value higher. Uh, the speed factor is basically how fast, uh, I think how fast the 
entity basically runs. So controls the speed factor of the entity on the block. So basically things like packed ice and stuff like that. Now default is one. Uh, honey blocks are a factor of 0 0.4. I would imagine that um, packed ice and stuff have uh, a higher uh, speed level when you're actually have something over it and stuff like that. So you can adjust that to a higher number and it'll basically make it go faster when you're basically want, um, walking on it. Uh, luminescence is basically if the block or the block glows or not. Uh, this is a number between uh, 15 and 0. Uh, so you can basically adjust it between those values and depending on the value that you choose will depend on the light level of the block. Now 15 is basically the maximum light level for the game so you can't go really higher than that. Enable a em emissive rendering glow. Uh, this is very similar to how the um, magma blocks uh, keep the glowing effect for the light level and stuff like that so you can enable this and it'll kind of hold that light level that it's basically um, uh, basically confined nearby so at least that's what I think it does I'm not sure I haven't really used it too often uh, now we move on to the dropping properties the dropping properties you can set a custom drop if you want you just select it from the list here and then you can set the drop amount. So if you don't want it to drop anything, you can set this to zero. If you want it to drop more than something, you can set it to more. Or if you want to keep it just the uh, one drop thing, then you can basically just have it drop one. And then the loot table, this is the more, more tricky part. Uh, you need a block tag for this. And the block tag needs to be um, under your own mod namespace. And I think the other one needs to be under the Minecraft namespace, where this one needs to be under your your basic um, your mod namespace, and then it needs to be blocks slash, and then the basically the the item name would be your registry name. So, for example, we're working with green underscore plant for our registry. So you would basically set this as your um, tag name is it the tag name or let me just custom let me just take a look at this so oh pardon me it's not a tag it's uh the registry so i'll cover that in just a second let's uh head over we'll create a quick loot table and thought it was a tag at first but i was wrong so if we go whoop, not tag uh, we want loot table and that would be living entity loot table and I'll just call it something like that and then we can basically go ahead and right here where the loot table registry name is you'd want to basically copy this and replace the one that you have here with slash and then it would be that and then you want them under your basically your mod namespace the loot table type uh, it shouldn't really matter too much I think I think it says everything that you need to learn in here. It should be under loot table. I think that's about it. Under the type of block. So it needs to be a block um, loot table type. So make sure that it's um, under block, mod namespace, and then it has your registry name for the block that you want right here. And then it's uh, blocks slash for the beginning part for the category. And then you can just set your loot table how you want. Very straightforward, a little bit tricky, but all the information is under the um, use loot tables for drop. And basically this will ignore this part here and it will um, go ahead and use a loot table instead. Uh, create a pick item. This is basically if you are holding down the, the middle mouse button where the scroll button is. And if you select a block through that, it will basically allow you to select a block. Uh, by default, it will be the block that you're basically clicking on unless you specify something else. Uh, this can be useful for disabling things for creative inventories and stuff like that. So if you don't want them to obtain it through creative, then you can basically set this to something like air or some other default block that you want them to click or an item or something like that. You can give them that instead. Uh, plant is unbreakable. This basically makes it uh, undestroyable, uh, very similar to bedrock, so you can't really break it at all. 
Uh, the is plant replaceable? This is very similar to the mechanics as uh, grass and other particular blocks. So for example, if you were to place a block on top of grass, uh, tall grass, then it will basically replace the block of the grass with whatever you're placing. So you can uh, enable that if you want. Uh, the other thing is the sound properties. So you can set your sound properties. There's a whole bunch of different ones built in. Default one is plants. This is what the vanilla one uses. Uh, you can also set custom sounds and then you would need to set up your breaking sound, uh, step sound, play sound, hit sound, and your uh, fall sound. But once you get all those set up, you can basically use custom ones that you want. And then let's move on to advanced properties. All right, so the advanced properties, uh, there is a, it has a block entity. So basically, if you want to use MBT data, you will need to enable this. Uh, otherwise, just keep it disabled. Uh, force plant ticking. Basically, plants don't tick by uh, nature, unlike other blocks and stuff like that. So if you want it to actually tick and do something with a tick rate, then you want to make sure that this is enabled and that when it generates, it will be ticking. But uh, use this with caution because it could lag quite a bit if you have a lot of plants like grass and stuff like that. So make sure that you use that with, you know, easy amount so if it's like a few flowers or whatever that are rare then okay but if it's an entire plains biome of grass probably not a good idea uh, the plant color on map this is basically what the color it will be on the map so basically if you were to open up a map in minecraft and this is what color it will be basically displaying uh, the colors uh, depending on what you set it up will be all listed under here all the colors for the map are under this list. Default, I think, is just air, if I remember correctly, or something like that. Um, there's also air here, so you can select either one of those if you don't want it to display any particular uh, color. So air, for sure, will um, not display anything where I think default might have a default inheritance of what block you're working with. So things like plants might have kind of like a foliage color. Um, so you might want to play around with that. If it's a red flower, you might want to do something like, I don't know, like red or something like that, depending on what your preference is. Uh, plant flammability. This is basically how flammable the plant is. So, for example, if you want it to um, burn... Uh, then the flammability for plants in general, I think, are zero. I don't think plants do burn unless it's something like um, leaves, and then that's completely different. That's actually a block, not a plant. Uh, logs have a flammability of five, where planks have a flammability of 20. Tall grass, I think, is different, though. I think it is flammable, so you can basically adjust that. Now, if you don't want it to burn, you can set this value to zero and then that will disable it. So you can set that to that. And if you want the plant to spread to other blocks uh, when it's on fire, then what you can do is you can basically set this to the fire spreading speed to basically the amount that you want to set it to. Now, I think this is set up for the grass blocks in general. So if you want the same grass properties, it should be the same here. Uh, AI path, uh, AI path node type. So basically, what kind of uh, block uh, for the AI that it will basically inherit? So things like um, trapdoor that has certain properties. Fences entities won't actually try to go over, even if it is a single block. Things like that. Uh, basically things that will prevent them from walking or going through or certain AI behaviors. Uh, all these different things have certain properties and stuff like that. So you might want to play around with that or you can leave it to default. The random model offset. This is basically where what controls the plant's offset for the X and Y or pardon me, X and Z location. You can set the X, Y and Z location or none if you want it to be, remain in the center. Uh, X, Y, or X and Z is basically the default values for that particular property. So uh, both flowers and grass uh, use this particular offset for the model. Again, it ties with the bounding box if you want to disable that uh, through the 
the bounding box and you would have to enable this uh, so it doesn't offset with the block. All right, so there's that. And then the plant type. So this basically generates randomly um, in a certain area. Plains is very surface generation. Desert is things like cactuses, dead bushes, things like that. Uh, beaches are uh, things that happen on beaches. Like um, I, I can't really think of too many things, probably like sugarcane maybe. And then you have caves, so things that generate underwater or in the cave systems and stuff like that. I'm not really sure. I don't think any of them are really used. Maybe mushrooms. I think mushrooms might generate down there. Uh, water, so things like kelp and um, other blocks uh, that are underwater, then that will be the generation for that. Nether, obviously, in the nether. And crops, I'm not sure if there's any particular use for that, honestly. I haven't really figured <laughs> I haven't even used it so I'm not sure but I'm assuming things like that generate when structures are generating but I'm not sure if villages actually generate like that so I'm not sure what that would be used for um, maybe play around with it see what it happens and then what under here is what um, optional list of blocks the plant can be placed on as placed slash grow on so you could basically set a custom list of blocks that the block can be basically placed on and that it will grow on. The uh, one bound down here is additional place slash grow conditions. This could be used to basically make sure that it doesn't float and stuff like that. So if you want it to be spawning on a specific block, you can basically make a addition additional condition. So for placing and growing. So if you only want it to spawn be able to be placed on things like grass, dirt, or anything like that. You'd basically create a condition for that for the plant, and then you can basically set a, a simple system. I'll just cover that quickly. So, for example, if you wanted it to test if you were placing it on uh, grass, then you would have to specify if the type is grass. So you would basically go ahead and grab an if statement, then you would test for that particular block. You'll need to go under Minecraft Components, and then you would test for the block and then you would get the block at the location and then you want to basically use the uh, flow control there is a true light blue return value and then you want to basically set this to true if it is a, a grass block and at the last part after all the conditions are run then you want to basically set it to false and now if it doesn't go through any of these and find the um, the true value, then it's going to return false. So you, if you wanted to add more of them, then you would basically just add something like that. You test for another thing, and it will return true. So that would basically be the easiest way to set up a something if you wanted it to only be able to be placed on grass, for example. Uh, this might affect uh, the generation type if you have something that spawns in caves. Obviously, the caves have stone and if you want it to generate on grass then it will be breaking when it actually generates so keep that in mind uh next thing that we have is triggers i'll cover that in just a second all right so there is quite a few different triggers for blocks so well plants should i say when plant is right clicked on so any right click event that you want for the plant you can basically set up a trigger for that uh, when block is added is a little bit different when the player actually, I think, it, yeah, when when block is placed by. Now, this is basically when the player bl places the block or an entity does. Uh, this is completely different than when block added. When block added will be when the block is actually physically added, where when it's placed by a player or entity, this will only run, where when the block is actually added uh, this will always run so keep that in mind if you're working with entities like when the player places it then you can assign certain values with that that's why there's the entity namespace or entity dependency that you have here but it's not in here uh, the other thing that we have is when neighbor block changes so any um, block next to it if it is broken placed or updated then this will basically run 
uh, it will basically allow you to test if there's a change with a neighboring block uh, very similar to a uh, observer block where it detects in the next block over where it's facing only this is for all four sides of the block uh, well six if you count top and bottom as well all right and then the update tick again if you want to enable that you have to go under properties I think where was it properties might have been mistaken it's under the advanced properties you'll have to enable the ticking property if you want to use this and then you can basically add a tick rate. Uh, now, if you want to use MBT in any of these, again, if you go under advanced properties, make sure you enable this. And then we have the uh, when plant destroyed by player. So basically when the plant is destroyed by a player or another entity, then you want to basically, um, you can basically set up a per, uh, procedure for when the block is actually broken by the player. There's also one for the explosions as well. Uh, when the block is start to destroy, so when something starts attacking it or there's a little bit of damage or something like that um, to the block itself, then what you can basically do is you can set up a procedure that will run when that uh, starts to be destroyed. Uh, when mob slash player collides with the plant, this is handy for making things like um, a cobweb effect or uh, potion, applying potion effects similar to the wither rose. You can do something like that if you want with that. Uh, we have already covered when player replaces the block. And then there is a client display random tick. This is good for particles and custom particles and stuff like that. You can basically set um, display particles through this method here and it will display on the client side. Uh, it's different than the update tick, but it might still require the tick for advanced properties to be enabled. So keep that in mind. And then we'll have the generation setting. All right, so the last page that we have for our plant is the spawn frequency on chunks. So this is how often it will spawn on chunks. Um, for example, all the information is under here, uh, but the basically what it needs to be is between one or higher, and you can just adjust it. Zero, I think, disables it, but anything above one will basically allow you to generate a patch of it um, on the chunk itself. Now, if you have it set to five, then there's... Um, think a possibility that five might try to generate on one chunk. So a chunk is 16 by 16. So you might want to adjust this accordingly, depending on how many, basically what your size of your patch is. So for example, if you have only like one uh, plant per patch, you might want to increase the number for this at a higher uh, number. And then you can kind of randomize the plants a little bit more and kind of mix them in with each other. Um, but if you want big glob blobs and stuff like that, you might want to adjust the value down to like one and then have something like, I don't know, 16 or 20 for uh, a patch of flowers. Now the patch will be a random range, whatever can basically spawn in a certain area. Um, under some conditions, some of them might not fully generate. So you might not get a full 20. It might be somewhere within that range. So keep that in mind. And then you want to basically set your um, generate uh, the dimension for it can gen generate in. Now, if you have nether generation, you'll want to set this to nether instead of surface. Um, but you, this basically needs to be selected for it to a be actually generating in the, the dimension that it's going to be generating in. You also have restricted biomes, so you can basically make it uh, similar like um, Lily of the Valley or other certain plants that only spawn in specific biomes, as well as orc, blue orchids. Those are all specific to specific biomes, so you can set those up if you want to enable a biome that it will only generate in like the surface or another biome or something like that, and then you can do that. Additional generation condition, um, this is... Um, I think basically what you can do with this is if you want it to generate only under certain conditions, uh, for example, if there's a block under it, then you can basically um, test if the block under it is solid, if it's the certain block that it needs to generate on. Uh, for example, uh, with that grass uh, condition that we created, uh, that would basically restrict it to 
only that block for it generating or not generating on but being able to place on with this we can also make sure that the generation only spawns on that particular block same idea uh, as the other procedure for the condition we use the true the return blocks to basically specify what blocks uh, should be um, uh, returning true and then we would basically allow it to do that so we can do that we could also set mbt if it has certain mbt or blocks nearby have certain mbt and so on so it's really dynamic on what you can use that for but uh, yeah that's outside of that that's about it uh, you can click the save mod element button at the top here and it'll save your mod element to your workspace and then it will show up in your list here. So if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.